course, I'm just looking at glancing at it. And of course, I haven't been on the site. Maybe I should go out there and look at it. But there's some of it. We, we need to man. We need to get some more power in. Here. Right. Right. Manpower. Yeah, and, and based on the manpower we have, the, my overriding thing is that we ask the engineers what absolutely has to be done, and we 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 know right after the inspection where we are. And basically, we ask them to prioritize that, and we, I think we've hit that mark, um, and I'm I'm satisfied with that. Um, as always, yeah, you, it would be nice if you could go year round and, and and do a lot of that prep work. But I had I haven't budgeted or planned for that, though. That's the only thing. But and I think we need to budget for it. Okay. I think we need to, to pump it up and, and get this maintenance work going. And if we have to bring them back in a month or two months early, get this done. I mean, we need to. We've been working. Yeah. That crew's been cut back. Um, yeah, one person. Well, since when we originally started, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of been back and forth with that. But it, I think from when we originally started, it's. I don't know what the number we had, but I think when was, we originally put that. It was four together. guys plus two of ours, but um, with with the staff, we're down to one of our per, per personnel. But um, the the other thing is is. Um, the way we're set up now, we do everything kind of linear. We, you know, we can do painting or beam repair or concrete repair. Um, if you got a bigger crew, you you can twin those where you can be doing beam repair and possibly painting or beam repair and concrete. Well, I think it would. We need to get prepped up front and keep the painting crew moving on the paint. Sure. The constant flow there. For I think yeah. we, I think we better hit it heavy this coming year. Okay. Well, we're already in that budgeting process. We can. Use that as a guide and, and, and just give me numbers to see where you think we ought to go. Certainly. And one of the things I would add is there are some things as you're uh, reading through that draft report, there are some things that are beyond our maintenance capability that we need to well, have a we're have to identify that. That discussion about. And that's when we're going to have to talk to DOT and mm -hmm. uh, some people that own this bridge besides us. Just one, one side note <coughs> um, with that idea, um, I did some. Kind of uh, rough numbers if you hired a contractor to do some of the work we do, and uh, um, <coughs> it, it's considerably, it would be considerably more if you hired a contractor. That doesn't mean that um, if you hired a contractor, they might be able to get you caught up, but you, at what cost would that be? So maybe we can add some resources and manpower in order to make that work and maybe get to a point. Um, that's acceptable to us, you know, on that. Well, you know, the state is doing different things. The DLT is doing different things. They're going out there and, and the state is doing a certain amount of work and the contractor is doing a certain amount of work. So maybe we need to get prepped for certain things. Maybe we need to look and have a painting contract to do the painting. I don't know. We need to look and we've got to get a vision out there on this bridge. A little different than what I got in this report. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So if we got to step it up, we got to step it up. This is the, this is the thing that's we don't need, you know, you, a, a certain color out there <coughs> waving in the air. Right. So we need to step it up. That's why you did this report. So I don't want to leave you short, but, every, you know, maybe you should propose that to the board for the money. That's all. Okay. Well, further, let's take that one step, uh, let's take that one step further in the direction I give you, Steve is when Majeski Masters is going to be up here in December or January, have put some numbers together with these items and, and in terms of estimates so that way we know, you know what these things are going to, what these things are going to cost. So they've got more than enough notice to sure. do that before the next uh, visit. Thanks. Um, not much to add out the airport, um, just really uh, more of a documentation uh, with our updating our wildlife hazardous plan with the FAA and then on the airport security plan, updating that to reflect uh, some changes out there. Um, most of my attention in the past two weeks has been with the port. Um, we exported 75 Festus drivetrain housings and 17 40-foot containers in a shipment to Europe, to Denmark. Um, that was done Sunday, Monday, <coughs> Tuesday of last week. Uh, right at the height of the storm there, I want to commend. Uh, we worked safely, but Monday uh, we, when the wind started up there, we got to about 5.30 and after that it, uh, it uh, really took off. So we, we kind of uh, slowed and stopped operations. Then uh, the following 
day. I don't know if any of you were affected, but we were about an hour from finishing when the lights went out. And uh, National Grid was very good, though. <coughs> they called me right away and told me what to expect. And, and sometimes, even though it's inconvenient, at least to know uh, where we were and what we had to adjust for. And uh, it, it cost us maybe a little bit in time, but I wanted to, I, I made the people locally aware that they did a good job of uh, keeping us aware of what was out there. So I wanted to mention that. Um, we did get, uh, the night before that, uh, a week ago Saturday, we, the MV Manistee delivered 14,200 tons of Cargill salt, um, 9,000 of which was regular road salt, and the other was the green uh, clear lane that uh, Wade referred to over uh, in his report. And uh, that clear lane has to be stored in inside of a building, so currently we're relocating 5,000 tons to our building five and storing that in. It's not an ideal location, but it works, and it'll uh, get us through the winter and uh, keep that salt uh, free from any kind of moisture. Um, in here it says the MV Algo Lake delivered 28,000 tons of salt. Well, that's not true. Um, when I wrote this, I was expecting it for Sunday morning, and then they had some difficulty loading the ship in Goderich, and that's been bumped out till tomorrow night. So we will see a uh, North American salt ship in tomorrow night uh, delivering 28,000 tons of salt. Um, we prepped uh, uh, building eight. It's been cleaned and emptied, and it's ready for uh, an anticipated uh, shipment from Richardson. Grain, and uh, as I mentioned, P5 is prepped for Cargill uh, Clear Lane Salt. We docked and cleared two cruise ships. That's it for the season. They've got enough, I guess. Um, what we did do, uh, I believe it was seven or eight cruise ships that we clear. They do all their touring and then we're the last port on the seaway so they come through and they spend an hour or two right there and um, it's kind of a service we provide and they've been here, I don't know, wait three or four years now? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, some of the folks have been on the board a little longer than others. You'll recognize this as the American Caribbean uh, line. It's got a new name now. But uh, I can't think of it right off. Small. Anyway. Well, well, okay. yes. Um, on the Port Access Road, the Scale House Foundation is uh, in, and uh, we're moving forward on the delivery. We've, we've uh, hired a contractor, and hopefully within 10 days to two weeks, we'll have uh, the building moved from the Governor site over to our site right there at the uh, new Port Access Road. Um, the county helped us very well with uh, finishing out along the railroad tracks there. The existing roadway was not lined and the county came in uh, 10 days ago and within an hour they knocked that off. They did a very nice job and um, we appreciated the, the work they did for us. Um, in the next 30, 60 days, I hope to get the scale house up and running and um, we will be seeing a couple more salt ships that will be um, November, late, probably late November and December, and we're working on the budget. Steve, in the port itself, it, uh, there's going to be a speed limit, right? Yes. And, and we're going to make sure we follow that speed limit pretty close, yeah. right? Um, yeah, it hasn't been nailed down yet, but we've got a lot of signs from the bridge project um, that when we change this, this all kinds of do you come up with any ideas what the speed limit should be within the port for trucks and traffic? I'd say 10 miles an hour, 10 or 15 miles an hour myself. Um, I know like the port accident order is rated for more than that, but it, you know how it is. If you cheat them or try to give them a little bit more, they'll always take more. So I'd say deliberately, you know, I, I would say 10 would be fine. It's just there's so many different buildings and things like that. Anybody going any faster, and you know yourself when you're driving that, you can be think you're paying attention and some come right out of the side there. So The main road going in and out, what are we looking at there, 20 miles an hour? I would say so. I mean, going up the hill, you're not going to be going that fast. Oh, maybe, no, not. Maybe coming down, but um, yeah, I could see trucks taking advantage of that. 
Um, well, I don't know, Wade, we haven't really nailed that down yet. But yeah, one of the things that uh, uh, we're waiting on is the installation of the signal and that road will remain closed until such time as, um, uh, really, there are two factors there. Um, one is the signal for safety purposes, and the other is uh, scale houses open and operational, and we anticipate the signal will be in, um, the last I've heard, in December. Is when, uh, in December that will be. And scale house will, should be ready to go in January? Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. We're shooting 12. Mm -hmm. Once we have that light up, then we'll have access out to Weed House Bay. Uh, the that, that's a good question. The uh, Wheat House Bay will be open as soon as there's appropriate signals up there. Um, like my grandson. We can go ahead and mm -hmm. open that back up, but right now it's um, without the signal, it's it's just not appropriate to do so. Okay. Um, Mr. Lockner, just for your sake, we recovered that pipe. <laughs> good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that I'd like to say uh, on our own personal crew and all our staff people and all the employees that worked on this situation with the scale house and getting it ready for the uh, building and everything, these guys have done an excellent job. And uh, I think a little bit of uh, appreciation from the board someday is to make sure these guys get some pizza and stuff when they get this thing up and so they can win and be warm and uh, make sure they get something to for their appreciation. All the staff people. We will take care of it because uh, again our crews have done an excellent job in getting this thing ready and this is an area of the project that's been directly under our control and uh, we're doing a heck of a job. Great job. So, I mean, it's uh, saved us a lot of time, a lot of money and it's good to know we got the capabilities to take over something when we need to take it over. And they've done a great job down there. I'd like to make sure that they know we appreciate it. We'll Send Sam the bill for the pizzas and stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> little paint, little, little. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't well, forget you know, to tell them uh, what it is. I mean, which we don't want to miss the lunch. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> but I think also is another factor is building, putting a house down there, a scale house that really is for everybody to use. Yeah. I mean, so we reciprocated by, I won't say we went overboard, but we really put something in position that was much better than we really anticipated sure. having it. So I'll agree. Yeah. But I think though, Fred, you're absolutely correct. I mean, our staff, though we realized where we're going to put the task, and our, our staff people have really, you know, have really have done a monumental job of what they had to do. So I went down there in different times in different vehicles, and I know. I'd have a guy chase me down with a red light on and a signal light on, and caution. He said, who are you? And he looked and went, oh, it's you. <laughs> I thought he had somebody riding around. Steve caught me. Did you? Go? I didn't say that. Was he going fast for 10 miles an hour? I didn't know. To say that. I he didn't know who it was. He was looking at the car like this here. Oh, excuse me. But you weren't going 10, 10 miles an hour. No, no, no they were four. stopped. Four. <laughs> four. Yeah. My brother said, you got me in trouble. I knew this. <laughs> anything else of Steve? Steve, you got anything else you want to add? Or anything no, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Well, it's not like we're busy, busy. Okay, this week we go back to uh, committee reports. The finance committee looked over the uh, all the reports to just uh, find. Okay, finance. Personnel, I think we had to do personnel. And then no personnel, no facility. Okay, marketing we did meet. Yeah, I, I wasn't at that meeting, so. No, the meeting with Fed Kelly? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I have reviewed it. the first part of it on tape, so. Yeah, okay. Do you want to get some update on that meeting? Or well, off the top of my head, I can give you a, a, a very good update. I thought it was a, an excellent meeting. Uh, Matt Kelly was here. He gave us an overview of the type of things that. Uh, he's involved with in the different groups that uh, we would become involved with as uh, a group. Uh, the, uh, Bruce was here, he gave us an update um, and uh, that was on the, uh, the, the 
prospectus of the yogurt plant, I believe. I think the other thing he showed us, a prototype of a possible web page. And, uh, and I personally was hoping the web page would be a little bit further along. I'm hoping that uh, they can uh, you know, take that a little further down the road because I think that's an image that we need with the information on it. Uh, I would have to say that one of the things, the one of the flavors I did get out of that meeting, but this is just from my own personal uh, viewpoint, is that Mr. Reish has been making every effort to be involved in about everything that has been involved anywhere in the local area uh, in, involving commercial development and economic development. Uh, and that, I was kind of pleased to see that uh, flavor. Um, you were there too. What else yeah, I'm just looking at my notes, Steve, and I was just thinking you back to Pat Kelly. And what are you were saying? In the past year, they've made over 2,000 contacts, customer contacts, and whatever it is. So everybody is really driving the, you know, driving hard to get what they get. Um, you mentioned marketing for St. Lawrence County it was a hundred thousand dollar investment each year. Uh, you talk about people within our reach that we can go after. Then there's people outside our reach. Um, one of the big things that we did talk about is actually the uh, Greek yogurt plant coming here and what you know what was needed to and all the logistical things to pull that off. I mean, it's just that something. Yeah, come on in. And we'll we'll talk to you when we want to be. A milk supply. How to work with cooperative. Um, you know, is it a fad, whatever it's going to be, that, that, you know, the need of energy, cheap energy to make it to make it happen. And so that, the John is working on that process. He didn't have it in his report, whatever, but I know that's what's happening is, is putting together a proposal with, you know, and, and putting something together that would make sense for this to happen. Uh, we know here that we have some ac uh, land here that's available, right out here off, off, off our, the road to nowhere, wherever you want to call that road. Um, you know, to, to do that. So it's, and then I looked at in the, in the newspaper, they did have a meeting in Watertown and realizing that the milk supply and what it takes to do the milk supply, North Country isn't ready to do this yet. I mean, they want to do it, but there's no guarantees. There's a milk shortage per se, where the milk goes and what's going to stay. So there's a lot involved to have a Greek yogurt plant to come here. I mean, that's, and that's some of the logistical things that need to, uh, be resolved. Uh, is it a, is it the done deal? Is it going to happen? Uh, we're researching it and see what the what the outcome of this research means. Um, there's more than just uh, you know to just pull it off. I mean, there's a lot to do with transportation, a lot to do with uh, location, a lot to do with supply, and you know, and what's the market? What's the market? And maybe <coughs> something you can have Wade, that. Uh, in regards to that, but well, the only other thing I would add uh, relative to that, and, and again, this is all public information because it was presented in a public session. Yes. But um, the um, product itself now can go into Canada, which has been that's a fundamental game changer from yeah. uh, uh, from previously. <coughs> and the product itself does not compete with uh, with uh, North Lawrence, for example. It is a different and uh, a distinct uh, product line. Um, it's something that would be a big deal if we could if we could pull it off. It requires a lot of things that we have: the water, the sewer, the site. Um, our location is is uh, excellent in this regard, and we have a lot of things that we bring to the table, particularly uh, due to our location and serving of uh, the geographic market in Canada, with our proximity to uh, Toronto, uh, Ottawa, and Montreal. That can be a real advantage. Um, <coughs> The, uh, there is some more work being done on that report. Uh, once that is finalized, then we'll go ahead and uh, get that out for proposals. What, what's involved here is the Greek plan, uh, if I remember the value, is like $120 million to build. And what it'll do is provide like 130, 130 jobs directly. Now what's the spin-off for that? You know, who knows what that is? What's the domino effect off that? And so it's a, it's a tremendous investment for a yogurt plant to come here and say, you know, you can provide the milk, you can provide the transportation network, the grid work, to do all the things you need to do. So um, it would work. It would work here. I mean, so 
I think we're all on board. This is what we, we really entertain. It's, uh, I'd say it's environmentally cleaner process with the way, you know, what the end product is. And, and uh, talking with some individuals the other day that uh, now there's other uses for whey than just throw them down the sewer and just dispose of them. There's other things that you can do with whey. So this is, uh, you know, another aspect of, uh, of that type of process. So. I just peeked at my notes too, so I don't know if that's my cheat sheet or not. I, had one. I just <laughs> happened to have them here. It, it was kind of interesting, some of the things that came out of there, because Mr. Kelly mentioned at the end, it isn't just the fact that it's uh, that has its possibilities, because North Lawrence is producing a certain uh, product itself, but the uh, plastics containers and the lids and the types of things they're using uh, pack the product is actually coming through Canada. So we, you know, we have other horizons that we perhaps could uh, uh, look at in, in terms of working along, even if all of the things we're hoping for didn't come to fruition. And to add, I remember they were talking about the way it has uh, a certain uh, fertilizer type of thing that they can use from the Greek yogurt, but they couldn't use from the regular yogurt without uh, plugging up the wells and that yeah. type of thing, which is <coughs> kind of interesting too. Okay, so yeah, that's good. I, I yeah, see in yeah, Syracuse yeah. paper the other day that Burn, Burn Dairy is opening one up in Cortland. And that's going to produce 60 to 70 jobs, that's it. So. Yeah. They're opening up a creek? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, one of the things that I think that, you know, I, I've you know, I know how much milk is going in and out of this area, and there's a lot of milk going into the New England states in this area. We all know that. And uh, it's happening every night. Tractor trailer is taken down through and they hook up and they bring it back. But it goes out of this state, that milk does. The other thing is, is what the governor is looking at is changing the law on the amount of the herds from 180 yeah. to 220 up in that area. And that's, that's a big issue there. But I think really to, to sit down on this thing, and I, I asked John the other day, and he, he didn't say one thing or one way or the other, but uh, I think we should sit down with the commissioner and, uh, of agriculture and ask him, you know, what he thinks and what his feelings is on this and what his people know about it to find out if, it, you know, if we can build a site here, if we can get a commitment to something, you got power out there, you got power that's, it, that these people are going to have to use, and you know all of these things. This plant's got to be new. There's going to be eight of them built in the state. They're talking about. Well, we have a site, 60 acres, ready, shovel ready to go. And um, you know all of this stuff has to be looked into. Uh, I, I mean, to me, I'd be talking to Daryl all the time and asking him, you know, we, where this thing. We did talk about that. You did talk to him? No, we did talk about <coughs> it. Yes, we had him, so. and I, I, uh, you know, I would try to formulate a meeting from this group with uh, Mr. Rawls trying to find out where, you know, where, where the thing is going here. And you just had a board member come in and tell you that uh, you said Briars here? Yeah, Burns Bur Bur yeah. Bur Bur Dairy. Burns Dairy, yeah. He's opening up a facility. Uh -huh. But it always seems to be away from here. Yeah. You know? But. Another 25, 30 cows make a lot of difference. Absolutely. So there's things that got to change, though, to get that number push. And uh, you really got to know the dairy industry if you're going to go into that market and try to market a plant. You got to know well, who controls the milk in this area and where it's going. And I can tell you right now, you got milk going out of this area every minute of the day in New England, the New England states. They got a lot of our milk. I think yeah, one of the things that came out in that report was the fact yeah. dairies would need to grow by yeah. a minimum of 20%. Yeah, and, and uh, they have the capacity to do that. But the other thing that came out in the report is, is some of these people are moving to the west. And well, actually, the, uh, the northwest, know. simply because here uh, a big right. herd is 180, 200. Yeah. A big mm -hmm. herd there is 7,000. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our farm's size don't even compare. The other, uh, I think, uh, in, in the report that came out was pretty interesting, 
once again, it doesn't take uh, any sort of rocket scientist to figure that that we have to exploit our Canadian neighbors in all the different ways that we can. In the use of yogurt in Canada is much, much greater than it is in the United States, believe it or not, the amount of consumption per day. And the fact that what Wade was saying was that now that we something like that can be shipped there, or there could be some sort of cooperative effort, we need to move on as quickly as possible, simply because the whole, they're already moving to Idaho uh, to produce this type of thing. People have figured it out. And uh, so I agree with what you're saying, Fred. The sooner and the faster uh, we, we need to get on top of it. Well, like I said, there's a plan being, uh, being discussed for the West that's going to employ 7,000 people making everything. One huge plant. And it's, the, it's already on the drawing board. They're just waiting to see how they're going to feather this out. And when that happens, it's going to happen in California and open them areas. That's a huge plant, 7,000 employees. A lot of, you know, we don't have all, always just small farms either. If you look around, there's a, a dozen or so farms with the north side of a thousand cows. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's about 18 to 20 that are about that size. Yes, well, and, <coughs> and all they really care, all they really want is to have a place to sell their milk at a reasonable price. We start to eliminate some of those transportation costs that they have to. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the other thing is too, with, with the, it's not the herd size that the governor was, was doing, it's the darn manure disposal. Yeah, exactly uh, right. The smaller farms, uh, the bigger farms can do it. They just, they just generate that much more capital. Smaller farms, they gotta have more flexibility. And this will work well if, if, if Como can put it through. I, I think the cow, cow Fred's gonna be closer to the 300 mark, not, not the 100, 220, more like 300, just below 300. And apparently you won't have to build the lagoons and do all this other stuff. And that'll be, for a lot of what I call family farms, they would like to grow, but they can't afford the manure uh, disposal process. There you go, right there. That does it right there. And it's the same thing with the milk, byproduct out of the milk. What do you do with it? Now, for years we had dryers. We had the last dryers were, that were just shut down in the last few years. It was over new. That plan is gone now. It's completely gone. It's tore down. It's gone. And uh, the, the other one we had was in Jefferson County. That's completely torn out. So the product and all of that stuff has to be figured in. But I would definitely you know, try to set up a meeting with uh, Commissioner uh, Daryl all the time to find out where, what we can do. Are we a player here? Can we help get these jobs in New York? Can we get into the market in Canada? I don't know what's going on in Canada, but they don't sleep over there. And if they're going to have products on their shelf, they want the jobs in their area. So there's a lot of play here, and there's a lot of movement going on. And, you know, we should get up on that shelf and make sure we're even a player. Well, if, you know, rather than, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Red, you're right, though. If you look through the packet, and I was reading through it earlier before we started, that the Canadian Airlines in Canada itself is uh, looking at all the people coming from Canada, coming across the border, take the cheaper flights in the U.S. And they're trying to figure out why it's so much more. And they know it's, it's a tax issue and a lot of other issues. They're going to become competitive. You're going to, we're not going to be careful. Well, she, they opened the Cape Air opened the door here today. <coughs> One thing not to jump in, but it all ties in together. Milk, bread, fuel, the whole nine yards. Is why not try to get planes to come in here three days a week, going to to Florida, yeah. going to Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe this is what we should be looking at and, and see if this thing will work. I mean, there's. Well, it's another example of our location providing a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And he says he can handle, and he has an agreement with Delta, Delta. to bring in flights. I mean, yeah. we all flew on them when, when we used to go to Vegas. Yeah. We go to Syracuse, or what was the name of that airline? Trans. Trans. Trans, Trans, Trans Air. Air. Trans Air. Trans Air. Trans Air. Trans then we went to Trans Sanford, Trans Florida. Trans Air. Was it? it was beautiful. Yeah. Jump on the plane two hours later, you're. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. All you have to yeah, do is look east of us to Plattsburgh and see what they do in Plattsburgh. Or yeah. mm -hmm. Even though we've done it on a smaller scale. Yeah. But I'm saying, certain people the here growth. and people just across the border in Canada, uh, mm -hmm. those parking lots are always full. You might have to start charging for your parking <laughs> or find a place to park. Well, the Plattsburgh deal, the Montreal market buys it so quickly that mm -hmm. people around here can't even, no, can't can't even get, get on it. it. No. 
You know? I, I have to go there. It's spirit area. That's what we got in the spirit area. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were parking. I mean, they were coming back full circle to the marketing report. The only other thing I would add relative to the marketing report is uh, we got a primer refresher on how a pilot agreement works from St. Lawrence County IDA right. and uh, the ins and outs of that. Right. You know, that's the other thing you can offer, too. You, you know, you've got the location, you've got the water sewer, you've got the highway, but you can also, with the cooperation of the IDA, help them out and finance it. If someone wanted to build a plant here. Yeah. Well, one of the most important things that's we've got is if somehow you can connect it all together with the power. Get that low cost power. There's 20 megawatts, I think, out there. 20 megawatts through that program. Plus, we've got a coal generation plant over here that I don't know where that's at. We've got two prisons we want to get cheap power for and, and heat. And all these things come together, and, and it just seems to be sitting there, and, and, and nothing is being motivated. Nothing's going on with it. Then all of a sudden, somebody will jump up and say, well, we've got to start doing this. Well, we always seem to fill in there, but nothing happens. And, you know, I, I look at that cold gen over there sitting there, and I look at the uh, thousand jobs that's between the two prisons and the psych center, and we got a cold gen that's sitting idle. Nothing's being done. We should own it. You know, and the, the, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of record. The press knows it. There's $60 million uh, uh, at the Augsburg Correctional Facility is going to be spent on a heat system to send out and heat the places. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me why we're not on board getting that cogen up and going. If some of these people don't want to do it, maybe the authority should look at doing that along with our government and get this thing going. Create the jobs. We got a substation out here, there's no power going into it. it just don't make sense. We got it all here, the infrastructure's already here. Why not work at it? You want to bring something here, that's how you bring them here is cheap power. That's what brings them here. Why is all coal there? Cheap power. And you get the 20 megawatts of cheap power, and it's going to be there, but you got to do something with it. It won't be there forever. Well, it goes right back to, I guess when I talk about our committee, market committee, is, is create dialogue is one thing. Then create a plan is another thing, and you can start moving on it instead of just talking. I mean, just really, this area is all we do is talk. We that's talk, right. talk, talk. And that's got, that's got to end. That's got to end, and it's, it takes manpower, yeah. sacrifice, you know, some people with vision to make this thing happen. And it's like uh, you said, Fred, is you got to get you got to get the people on board. You need you need to be on board. We need to get a green light from somebody yeah. that's up there. If you can give us a green light, let's go, yeah. and then we can start moving things. But you put all this effort into it, nothing happens. That's okay. it. I mean, uh, all the meetings and all the talk and all the BS that goes with it, nothing happens. You have to have the green light from the source, and the source, you know where it is at. The governor and the commissioner. Thank you. Who owns the cogen facility? It's, it's I don't know. Uh, I really don't know now. The cogen facility, um, OMH, Office of Mental Health, owns the land, and um, the uh, building and the equipment inside is owned by a third party. Who's this lady sitting right here? It's a. Uh, Know the individual that runs it, Joe Klimazuski. The name has changed of uh, the ownership partner. Uh, it's not Alliance. That's two names ago, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's something like that. But it seems to me that they should, you know, of course, the trouble is dealing with the state owning the land is discourages independent people from wanting to do something. And so well, maybe that's why maybe, maybe the authority ought to be looking at something. Yeah. Okay, uh, <coughs> great discussion, great discussion. You make something happen, you the best part of it. Uh, any unfinished business, Wayne, anything that you need to cover? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, schedule of upcoming events, uh, December 5th. That is our budget workshop date. When? December 5th. And Wednesday, so December Wednesday. 5th. Uh, budget workshop will start at uh, noon. Uh, we'd have the budget workshop and then the board meeting immediately follow. Wednesday. We think take two or three hours to go through that? Basically. Um, it, it typically does. It took a little bit less last year because of the different format. Everything being out there, graphical format. Mm -hmm. um, my advice, I, I would say probably between the budget workshop and the board meeting, probably better along the total about four hours. So we're talking about a 12, 12 o'clock lunching and then 1 o'clock start? Um, we could do that. Well, that's fine. We'll that. 
preference. That's what we did the last time. Right. I don't want my sugar going up. All right. So 12 o'clock lunch, 1 o'clock start. <coughs> by 6 o'clock. <coughs> I hope so. <coughs> if not, you'll have to turn it over to the... Step down the ladder here. <laughs> it all depends on the number of uh, questions and the amount of dialogue. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. I promise I won't ask. That okay for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let's uh, schedule that. Uh, when was that meeting in uh, Toronto? For January? Do you have um, a date I know. I will get that. Um, it's mid-January. Uh, for the court directors meeting in Toronto, um, okay. I will track that down. Okay. Doug, you and Steve, what, what's your schedule for departure? What you want to do? For January. Are you guys okay? For I'm here for January. I'm, I'm here probably till the in end February, end of January. Oh, okay. So the 16th meeting is okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And we'll leave, yeah. that, leave that intact and then we'll go Just the thought, <coughs> it might be too much to try to put together or whatever. Uh, Fred was talking about perhaps some sort of uh, something for some of the workers that uh, had done such an extra job, which I think would be really nice. Yeah. One of the things that uh, maybe some of the rest of you are are uh, more aware of the employers or know the employees better than I. This this is a good opportunity for for us to maybe tour that site at the same time, have that luncheon and a chance for us to meet some of the some of our workers. I come in, I look at the board, I know some of them because they're in the community, many of them I've not had the opportunity to meet personally or whatever, uh, and maybe we could do something like that. Are you uh, talking about at the scale house? Yeah, see the oh, scale okay. house, have a quick lunch we'll or up as a and come down well. here yeah. uh, for our meeting after, uh, and I guess what I'm really looking at is the opportunity to mix with <coughs> some of the staff and to uh, so that we can get to meet them personally to let them know that we are uh, as Fred says uh, uh, appreciative of their efforts but we're looking for opportunity in my mind we should be looking for opportunities for morale building and to be there and to be personal part of it I think uh, would be good excellent suggestion we'll set it up yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to let you know I'll be going from January 6th to the 25th. Okay. I just wanted to let you know. To when, friend? The 25th of January. 25th, okay. So I, just, I don't know. I guess you're going to have enough board members because of the rest of them are going to be here. Doug's going to be here and uh, Steve okay. both going to be here. I just didn't want to leave you short in the middle of it. I'll be back on the 25th. We should be okay. I mean, is that too long from the December 5th to January 16th? No, that should be okay. Um, I mean, I'm just saying the main reason business generally slacks off uh, during that time. Um, <coughs> the key one is going to be the December 5th for the approval of the budget to get that approved. Okay. Um, I'll be here for that. In January, if we have to. I mean, worst comes to worst, and we have to move things around. We can move things around in late January, and then just uh, push the February meeting back. <laughs> We've done that okay. in the past. Yeah. Well, it just seems like I don't know, January 5th or something would have been a better date. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was on the 16th. That seemed like. Uh, between the timing of the New Year, Martin Luther King Day, and all that other stuff that typically goes on that first uh, week in January, we typically bump it until about mid January. Okay. You want to leave it? Okay, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'll leave it there. Okay, uh, business items. Okay, we have several uh, uh, smaller things tonight, but uh, that makes them no less, no less important. 
Uh, we'll start over on page 9 with agenda item A1, this approval of the transfer and storage agreement. This is at the airport, it's for hangar space. It's uh, for one year agreement that starts December 1st, 2012, expires November 30th, 2013. There are two agreements here, one for Mr. James Roberts, Robertson and one for John Gearhart. Two separate resolutions? Uh, no, one separate, or one resolution, for both uh, both two approvals. Yes. They're substantially similar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any motion? I'll move it. I'll okay. second. I'll move second, Steve. Further questions, comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Okay, over on page 11, agenda item B1. This is for an industrial building lease with Corning Incorporated. This is for 500 square feet. Um, at the rates, terms, and conditions you see before you, start dates November 1st of this year expires October 31st of next year. You can see on page 12 um, the area that's actually in building one. And um, that is the, um, the former Mitel Breckenridge building. Now, what are they using for? Uh, that was my What's that? Yes, I'm sorry. There's, uh, you're, you are correct. There's one 500 square foot in building one and one 500 square foot in building nine. Yeah. Now, what, what, That's in what page they using on for? page 13. Right. On this particular thing, there was something that needed to be stored in separate uh, buildings. I don't recall what the something was, but it could not be stored in the same location. Yeah, so that's the thing. We, you got building one, you got 500 feet, and then you got all that other space. <coughs> but then you got to go to another building. Is it the same building? No, different no. building. Uh, because of Corning's unique requirements, um, this had to be two separate spaces. It could not have been uh, one one thousand square foot and chunked together. That's it. I make a motion to pull the resolution as submitted. Thank you, Kevin. I'll second. I'll second. Further questions, comments? All those favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, agenda item B2 over on page 14. This is with Era Shoes. This is for 3,600 square feet of space in the 9th Industrial Building. They lowered that to 2,400 square feet. After the agenda went out. Okay, so it's 2,400 square feet. Okay, thank you. Let me ask you a question, though. This company's been here before, right? Yes, Era Shoes. Yes. Are they here now? Yes, they are. And you can see it um, over on page uh, 15. <coughs> now, I'm looking at page 7 here, and I'm building 9. They got 94, 60 square foot. Yes. Are we taking 100, 1200 square foot off that number, or is that the right number? Page 7. Are they? I know, but I'm just adding up. It's 58, 60, and 2400. Where's it up? So 8,200. Where's it at? 8,260. Is that worth it? It's going to building nine, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's correct. So that number's going to go down 1,200, Patty? No. Oh, from 36, yeah. No, from, it says 94. It shouldn't be 9,460. It should be 8,260 because they right. were going to take 3,600 okay. and they dropped it to 2,400. Okay. All right. Wait, did we recently... This rent space of this company? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we did. So that was the original 5860 that, 58 yeah. 60 that you see. And then that right. uh, this is more space. Yeah. And now they require more space. Yes. Okay. Make the pass the resolution. Great time, huh? Second. So, uh, so any further questions, comments? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All, all okay. Agenda item B3 over on page 16 is a supplemental lease agreement with the Falsco Corporation. Uh, they're under some space constraints and need 888 square feet of space in the 12th industrial building. At the rates, terms, and conditions you see before you, it would be uh, starting December 1st, 2012 through May 31st, 2013. And on page 17, you can see the crosshatch um, area that they uh, would be renting associated with this lease. 
They're already in this building, right? No, on this one, this is uh, this is new space for them. They've already had it for six months. <coughs> let me let me go because this is kind of like. Uh, I want to. How do you choose that building over another building? Well, this one it's cus customer driven. Okay. Patty, what does this say? This is a renewal here. Supplemental lease. Oh, supplemental lease. There it is right there. Thank you. <coughs> Did each building have the same rate? For each building, each building entails a different rate. No, each each building has a general rate range, and beyond that, it's a function of individual negotiation. Okay, so so for example, um, put some numbers with this: the 888 square feet is at one rate. The 864 immediately adjacent to it. Uh, maybe at a completely different rate, but it will generally be within a dollar, dollar and a half of each other. Now, is this the only company that's in that building? No. no. Oh. Steve, do you want to go through the companies in there? In the 720 and 744, right on the top of the page, that area is, um, well, should, I'll get an updated drawing, but the law offices are in there for the state on there, and then You've got the Pelsco, and then as you come to the bottom of the page, you have uh, oh, the um, they process the credit card. What's what's the asset management? Center? Yeah, T -base. about T base. T -base. T base is in the lower half, and then what, what's the other one, Patty? West End. West End. Asset. So it's virtually full, um, and it, um, the, the law offices really control that top part of it. That's all secure, so they all come up that where you see the uh, the main entrance. Everybody comes out that way, that the other people that use the building. And that's worth pointing out, too. This is the former Jack and Jill daycare Correct. center that yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we struggled with for a long time. <coughs> yeah, two of the tenants really need secure access, and that's the law office and the uh, people that process the credit card there. <coughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank yep. you, Patty. Mm -hmm. Almost that. Okay, where are we at? We have a motion. Done. Oh? Second. And second. Okay. All those in, uh, any further comments, questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Good. Okay. Um, on page 18, there is a right of entry agreement with Time Warner Cable. Uh, Steve, you're going to have to help me out here because the document on page 19 didn't quote uh, appropriately here. But Time Warner needs access uh, to three locations due to custom, customer needs. One is 812 Proctor Avenue, one is 806 Commerce Park Drive, and 808 Commerce Park Drive. Um, and that's the, the uh, sketch that you see on page 19 that didn't copy so well. Um, in order for them to do this, um, we need the authority needs to provide access to Time Warner uh, to install underground services. Steve, do you have any? Straight of Ferris would be on or? the west end of the Social Security building. That would be Building Six. So that that's the main one, and that would be uh, that would be uh, let's see. yeah, that would be the Building Six there. And then, so this is really coming up. Uh, let me see as I see this. Be, the main yellow line there you see is coming up um, Proctor Avenue. What's going on, Paul? Steve, is it buried? No, it's buried. Oh, no. It's going to be trenched. And then they uh, tunnel underneath uh, roadways. They push a pipe through yeah. and, and run sure. that all underground. Now that's the way you just provide it to say, yeah, go ahead. Is yeah, we, we don't. Yeah, we. we <coughs> Because it's our site, um, they have to call in a call before you dig. So they're looking for phone lines in the ground, gas lines, any power lines. But there's some things that we might have put in over time that have nothing to do with an outside utility. So we have to okay that there so that, say, we put a, uh, a drainage line through there that the city didn't do it or anybody else did. We, we have to make sure that uh, that's a, that, that this roof is okay. 
It's just the typical yeah, easement yeah, agreements for utility, typical yeah, utility yeah. easements. They call it uh, right in yeah. Primarily, uh, the question was asked, uh, what do we get for this? Do we get any money associated with this? Uh, the answer to that question is no. Uh, when these type of agreements have come up in the past, we have authorized it strictly because it's uh, for the benefit um, of the customer and we feel that it augments the capability of the building. So there has not been Because even after the tenant leaves, you still got the wiring yeah. of the building. That never goes. It's like gas. Yeah. Yeah, you rarely well, ever see any Some we charge and some we don't. I, I guess I them all up. We, did, we just did one of them a month ago and they because their wires are running across the top of them, we get we got the. That was um, similar in the fact that it was an easement, but different in the fact that it was on the railroad. Now, on the railroad, for some reason, every time something crosses the railroad, uh, there's always a dollar amount associated with that. Um, primarily because it's not for the benefit of our customer; it's for the benefit of the utility involved. It's similar, but there's there's a difference there. Well, they're, 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 they're making a profit off of this. Yes. <coughs> it's not like they're not making money. They're making a profit. We're, we're not making nothing. We're allowing them to use our property. Well, it doesn't right. make sense, though, if it's we right fire right. up it's our right. buildings with these, that those particular locations become more valuable in terms yeah. of... Uh, but if that service, they do, they you can't more take that service away. Well, function, well, uh, my guess is, is this isn't for TV. It would be probably for internet or something well, I like understand that. that. So yeah, therefore, uh, those buildings can be used or those areas can be used for something maybe beyond storage or whatever if they have uh, these capabilities. But I was to say, Steve, if Time Warner runs it in there and nobody uses it, it's Time Warner's cable, it's Time, Time Warner's underground. They're, you just don't use it. Even if they were to walk away, it's still their service tied into their system. It, you know, I just don't understand why there isn't a cost factor here. They're going to make money off of this. <coughs> Do they charge the tenant to pay them? I don't know. Oh, I, I mean, I, I didn't negotiate this thing, so I don't know. But it, it doesn't seem right to me that we charge some people for easement costs. And then we turn around and let these people come in and do whatever they want. They're making a profit from whoever hooks up to it. Well, I think the difference here between the one that was across railroad traction here. Well, I was just using that as an example. Yeah. Well, well, beat me up. I'm only a no, 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 no. I'm not beating you up, Fred. Too, too big for you. But basically, what it is, it's some, your, your tenants themselves ask for the service. They can't get it without our consent. So what do we do? I mean, if well, you, I think, if I you think say I want a fee, they're just going to charge it to your tenant. Oh, That's I don't believe that. Oh yeah, don't worry, they yeah. will. It's on their bill. They'll recover. It'll, it'll be covered under bill. Easement up either, they drew the easement up. What's that, Patty? Time Warner drew the easement up. We didn't draw the easement up. But the ones we charged, we drew the easement up. I'd just like to know why there isn't uh, some type of fee here on this thing. Because they drew it up? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other reason is in the past, when this type of situation has presented itself, there has never been a fee charged to Time Warner for things going to our buildings. Because we have viewed this as a benefit uh, to the Bridge and Port Authority and a benefit to the tenant. Do we charge the electrical company to run wiring to the building? Yes. No. I know it's um, a dumb question. The answer to no, that is probably no. Not a dumb question. I'm <laughs> trying to think. Well, I, I don't recall one. I, I believe you have to have those surfaces. If you have the services there, it's going to make the locations somewhere down the road more saleable, in my opinion. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's other ways they can get the service. They can get it through satellite services. Uh, you know, there, there's other options. That's not the only <coughs> option. There's wireless services available. Well, but past practice is what? We haven't. Past practices, we have not charged time. All of a sudden, we're going to change that. Well, somebody's had to prove that that way, friend. So people sat here, so it had to be gone through before. I don't ever remember approving any of these things. We just did one. Yeah, we just did one all to. Uh, wasn't it Alton? Uh, 
We just did one. Yeah, we just did one a month ago or two months ago. That came to this building. Um, they came across the field here up and underground to this building. <laughs> no fee associated with that one. Um, we had gas easements with building 14, didn't we have new? That's right. Yeah, there were new gas easements with building one. 14. We had something go on with building 14 um, oh. with getting the easement. Fold yeah. Oh, that was fold. Yeah. 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 So they're running this line to this building. They're not charging us anything. Or are they charging the tenant for that line? Yeah. Well, you know, you don't have a lot of stuff in here for, for these people coming in and digging up our property and doing things and what happens if they hit something. You know, it's not all in here. This is just not something I'm against. I'm trying to figure out why some more detail in here. And now you're telling me that Time Warner is going to do up the agreement. And we don't know. What, I mean, you got a blue line here. So here's where they're going. It looks like a fish hook. Mm -hmm. You know, zip. You know, what is in there right now for these companies? Are they already hooked up to Verizon? Or are they hooked up to uh, Slick? I don't know who they're hooked up to. It seems there that Time Warner has come in and undercut somebody and got a chance now to hook up these folks and they want to come through the, they get a right away through this thing. You know, I, I, this is the first time I've seen one of these things like this. I can't speak to that, uh, Mr. Carter. My advice would be if you're not happy with it, table it and we'll to uh, bring it up before the committee and get more answers. I'd like more answers. I'll go through the committee. Uh, first time I've seen this. Okay. Well, let's we'll table it. Uh, motion for the table it. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second it. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye to table it. Aye. 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 I heard all the ayes. Thank you. Okay. On page 20, we have agenda item B5. This is approval of a use permit for the Toys for Tots program. On page 21, you can see uh, the space we're talking about here is 5,200 square foot of space, the former Social Security space. The Toys for Tots program is uh, looking for space. They don't have space, and they're a not-for-profit organization. I make a motion to approve it. I'll second. You're ruining the cable to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what this is. <laughs> I know what it is. This is a great idea, Wade. Uh, Seems to be a good fit. Any further discussion? Comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> right, my comment would be this is another one of those things that the Bridge and Port Authority uh, supports the community services and type of things that uh, can make a difference, even though know, it's, it's at our cost. Certainly. Agenda item B6 is approval of a supplemental lease agreement with AB Technology. The best place to view that is on page 24. You'll see the highlighted cross-hatched area. It's not a lot of additional space, but it is 560 square feet of additional space in the first industrial building. Term would be November 1st through September 30th of next year. Do we know if they're going to stay? Or is this a one-year deal in our own? Um, we never have any guarantees, so. No. Okay. Make a motion to approve it. Any second? Second. Second, Steve. Any further comments, questions? It's an interesting rate that's on it. It's like the price of a snowblower or something. <laughs> yeah. And then part of that is the small amount of square footage. Mm -hmm. it just, yeah. I think we're going to have to look at it. You said something about it. Yeah, right. It's crazy. All those in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the ayes. Thank you. Item B7 on page 25 is an industrial building lease with Ontario Gasket. This is for an office area that totals 108 square feet. Uh, term would be November 1st, 2012 through October 31st, 2013. And you can see the highlighted area on page 26. Now where are they going to here? What building? Same building. Uh, building 1. It's a closet. <laughs> yes, it's an <laughs> office area. Oh, an office area. The good news is when I first read this, I thought it said casket. 
<laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> it's too small of a space for casket. The casket, yeah. Like, whoops. What do you think is here, Wade? Is there a possibility of these people renting more space, ramping up some kind of production? Well, there is. One of the things that, uh, well, I guess there's no reason we can't discuss this in a concession. You could uh, take one and pass it around, please. I mean, uh, the rates and our strategy and everything for uh, renting space needs to be discussed in executive session, but the building profile itself um, that you can that you can see here um, lays out what our thoughts are in terms of growing um, in this particular building. One of the problems is, is as you well know, we have not had the large number of folks knocking on our door saying, I need 2,000 to 5,000 square feet. What we have um, had is we've had folks that um, have a dollar or two that are looking to rent 500 to 1,000 square feet. Uh, AV technology over on the right-hand side there is a perfect example of that. And that's a business that has grown. And as a result, now needs the, the space uh, that you just approved in between uh, G and F on the document there. Um, so what we're looking at here, we're looking at this building and we're trying to avoid the problems of the past where we have uh, chopped up a building, however a customer comes to us and says, you know, we want to rent this, this area and the customer just by nature will cherry pick things to their advantage and there's nothing wrong with that. But we want to rent out the building in a way that makes sense. So what you see here is you see the diagram of the building, the green areas do not exist. The green areas are, are uh, new walls or uh, fenced in uh, uh, divider areas that would be built based on customer need. Now the thing that we need to consider here is this puts us in a little bit different mode as we get multiple tenants in one area and now we're starting to be responsible for, for things like maintenance of the common area. We do that in other in other areas of our facility, just not in our in the industrial park. Um, so this is something that we're going to have to talk about. Going forward. Um, the thought is that these businesses, as they they move in, will need additional space, and the additional space they will need is broken up into zones, for lack of a better term. And on the second diagram that's being pa passed around are these larger zones. So in other words, uh, I'll give an example. A catering business down in the bottom right-hand corner of the, uh, the building. The catering business would need the cafeteria area down the bottom right-hand corner mm -hmm. and probably the space to the north of it um, as well. So that, so to give you an idea, this area makes sense to put into one block right here. Um, the area area where AB Thermal is, up in this red area here. We know they're, they've expanded once, they're probably going to expand again. It makes sense to have them in this larger green area uh, block. So each one of these blocks represents a functional area of the building. Now one of the things that we need to keep um, in the forefront here, we've got a receiving dock up here. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're having multiple tenants in the building and they all need to use the receiving dock, it's pretty important to keep a uh, corridor right there. So you want to make sure that when we're renting it, for example, yeah. uh, we keep the corridor, corridor open. So what we did is we looked at the building. We said, okay, it makes sense to bust this down into zones. And then further within these zones, it makes sense to bust it down into individual footprints, which are the first which is the first sheet that uh, I passed out. So what this means is when a customer comes to us and they, and they say, I need 800 square feet of space, we already have it conceptually planned out and say, okay, well, this, this space uh, right here might be a perfect example for you. It also allows some expansion opportunity because you could have the area directly behind out until uh, where you would run into that common corridor. So what we're doing, we're trying to learn from uh, well, uh, this goes back the past situation that we've yeah. had. Well, this goes back to originally what I asked you. 
you know, the first part of the meeting in John's report, what is your plan and how you're working this? Now, obviously, you're answering it this way. Yes. Okay. Because it does start to make sense if, <laughs> you know, unload one building, you may have unloaded it in the wrong way, so you got to have a business plan how you be effectively use of your building. So, so this, no question about it. This type of strategy, if we have a customer that needs 15,000 square feet of space, we can still accommodate it. Yet if we have 15 customers that need 1,000 square feet of space, we can accommodate that too. We're, we're doing some planning in that regard. Now one of the things that I need to talk with you about in executive session uh, later on tonight is, okay, now that we've got the building um, conceptually designed, what type of rate structure do we want to have associated uh, uh, with these to try and uh, create some jobs and some opportunities there for some Canadian and U.S. firms to uh, open a facility here? Mm -hmm. We need to draw this well, it, Just to go back here just a little bit here, and I, you know, I just want to, I don't want to, you mentioned something about this cafeteria. You're talking about going out to contract with somebody to do well, buffets or? No, for example, um, I've had a couple conversations with folks that are looking to open a catering business. If they're looking to open a catering business, they need the cafeteria area, which is down in here, plus they need <coughs> some space to go with it. So, for example, you wouldn't want to gut the space immediately to the north of it and take out the finished area there and make that into warehouse space. Wouldn't make sense because in this big green block here, it makes sense to try and rent those two things together because there, there's a natural fit, there's a natural flow of those two uh, those two spaces. Now, there's a cafeteria there right now? Yes. Yeah, it's in the Beckenridge building. Mm -hmm. Right there where we oh, had... Oh, that's the one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. where we yeah. had the meeting room. Right, that's right. Okay. The conference room. Yeah, you're right. There's our new offices right here. I see them. As soon as you get the whole town here. Mm -hmm. So we gave it some thought so that way we didn't chop up the building and lease it out in a manner that doesn't make sense that has caused us, again, not in recent memory, but five, ten years ago, we just rented out space willy-nilly and as a result we got stuck with a, with a nightmare of utility problems and that switch operating something on the far side of the building. Um, Whole variety of problems there that we had never. So this is the, the this is the really only one yeah. organization in this building right now. No, How many have people's in this building? Room. How many different Four. companies in this building? Seven. Well, I understand. I'm asking the question. They should know. Well, we have a couple of new ones that were just approved tonight. All in this building. Yes, we have uh, <coughs> AB Thermal, yes. Seiko, Ontario Gas, yes. yeah. AB Corning. Uh, ABS is in there, that's right. Steve, am I missing anybody else in there? There should be the report here. Seiko, where's that? Corning is in there. Corning is in there. AB Thermal. And um, yeah. Sable, Sable. So you've got four companies in there. In this building, though. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. See, so that goes back to what I asked you before. You got those people, I mean, <laughs> why would they go into the back of the building? Just use uh, yeah. building nine. Okay, you got 4,000 square feet, and all of a sudden you're going to take 2,000 square foot and put it in a 28,000 square foot building. Well, part of it is they're shown in Building 9, um, but they want to be in Building... Well, I know where they want. Yeah. I'm just saying it's like, and I'm nice. it's nice that we have that space where they can go where they want to go. But if I got Building 6, which has got 5,200 square foot, Building whatever, I mean, all of a sudden, I, I know you answered the question, Wade, because mm -hmm. the question was, you know, can they move these people out at a moment's notice if you've got somebody who needs 28,000 square foot? Yes. I definitely you're going to find the space for them in a hurry, you know. But. So your business plan is to divide this building up, right, piece by piece, so in other words, it has a level of flexibility. 
you're assuming that you're not going to get a big box guy to come in. No, that doesn't make that assumption. Uh, what this does, it allows for both opportunities. It allows us to rent the smaller spaces um, as the market bears, okay. but it also gives us the flexibility if somebody, if we land a client that says, I need 15,000 square okay. feet, well, then you're in two of the larger green areas. Yeah. For I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying is that that's your plan to, obviously, uh, you know, you're obviously you're getting little bits and pieces, 500, 200, 100, you know, whatever. I mean, all those type of things. So you got a huge building here that's got to be utilized some way. But I just, you know, if somebody comes in in a hurry, and I, I wish that would happen, and we own this building. Wait, and this, uh, this Ontario Gasket Company. Yes. All right, where, we, where you've got that proposal where they're going to go, as you said, is right on, on this, on F, right here, you said? AB Technology. Oh, that's AB, uh, it's AB Technology. It's right here. It's going between oh, okay. F and G right. in that okay. box. Right. 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 That's AB Technology. Ontario right. Gasket is going yeah. over near going down down number eight. That in the okay. Over yeah. the I was assuming it was going out of place. It's just a small right. office. Yeah. Now you're partitioning this off. Uh, no, we are not doing Everything is all there right now? No, anything green does not exist. Okay. And anything green will not be built unless it's needed. Okay. It's just um, it's a conceptual plan of how to um, reuse building one as a small business. Right, so what do you do with this vacant space? Are we heating that, per se? Right now we're heating the entire, uh, yeah. the entire space, yes. You have no, you have no choice. Oh, well, I know you have no choice, but it goes back to my original idea is like, okay, so am I going to heat this at uh, 72 degrees, right? Yeah. Or am I going to put it over to another spot and heat this thing at 50 degrees? I mean, I don't know what the, you know, the costs are. I mean, I'm just asking what's, you know, what's, what's a better plan. I mean, it's nice that they're there, and I, you know, it's like, okay. You know, sometimes you plant a seed, other seeds get planted with it. I mean, I'm just saying that mm -hmm. that's, that's what the plan is. Sure. Are we heating it because we have to for maintenance, or is it just that it's well, not zoned? We, we haven't raised. We aren't raising it any different than um, we, we kind of run it about 65, 68 degrees. If they wanted to, though, like cut parts off, is it zoned? Like, is they no. heating? Oh, so no, that's what Wade's oh, talking no. about. Is oh, so right. and all of these buildings. The only building we si we actually built was. We did 14, build 14. We had three different zones. three things, and they're yeah. divided um, what 800, 8,000 yeah, square feet a piece. Three chunks, and those, yeah. and those, they have a there's four panels. One panel just runs the outside lights and for the building, and then the, the other three one is associated with area one, oh. two, and three runs their HVAC and their lights, and uh, pretty much their heat. Is the same way, and it's all zoned that way, and that well, we we put a lot of effort in that, and um, all those things we try to incorporate with that. So, and the thing is, you don't want to you, you try to get away from dividing those each into yeah. three parts, and we we've, we've had good success with that right yes. now. That's that completely, and they pay for their utilities there, and they pay for what they use that control that heat. But if we're the, if we've got it all cut off, exactly. we can't very well. You can do it on square footage, and that's yeah, and it's yeah. Very, but somebody might like it warmer and somebody colder, and in fact, somebody's paying for somebody else's mm -hmm. use. There's no incentive when we have. There's no incentive to shut the lights off. I mean, somewhat it does. But oh yeah, it's all spread out. But Sam, I think to go back to your question. I think this, this, these diagrams and this kind of like proposal is getting to what you want. Don't you think? You know, getting getting all these smaller businesses in one area, so we we don't have four or five different buildings with. I mean, that could be right, Doug. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying you know that's right or wrong. Whatever. I, I guess you got all this space and you got some little bits and pieces in here. Yeah. I, I mean, listen. And maybe I'm, I'm not dis disagreeing with what you're saying. I'm just oh, want to oh. know what your business <laughs> model is and what your thinking is, so we can understand. Okay, I mean, for a marketing approach, what are we looking at here? I mean, I know we got a lot of square footage here that you know needs to be used, you know, mm -hmm. sold out there and whatever. I mean, Breckenridge leaves 250 jobs behind. 
And I know it's say, all right, so what do, how do you make that up? I mean, is there somebody out there that's going to look and come in? I, I want my own building. I don't want this little piecemeal with somebody across the hall from me. I don't want any of that. So until that happens, until it happens, I guess you have to ask yourself, I don't know, and it's really good that you're doing. You get little pieces here, a little, okay, that's money coming in. That's money coming in. It's heat, you gotta, you know, they're gonna do something here, whatever. What does it cost us per I wonder what it costs us per year to heat that bill and then maintain the bill and empty. And, uh, you know, probably we have a pretty We know we have that. good baseline data. Yeah, that first year. Yeah, that first year it's that empty. Yeah. So we do know that. Pretty much, yeah, you could get that for everything. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, Sam, your point, if um, we have somebody that uh, uh, we land that says, you know what, we want our own part of the building. Okay, well, we take this line, we extend it right here, where the original building was, and from here over, that's the, um, that is uh, that larger company. Yeah. And if there happens to be somebody that's located down here, we exercise that clause and we stick them down in the other part of the building. But ask yourself this question, Lee. You got a loading dock. That's okay. So what are you gonna how is that loading dock gonna be used for all these people? Do any of these people need that loading dock? There's there's three loading yes. docks. There's one in the back and there's two in the original building. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the back so side. So give you the idea. Alright, show me. There's a loading dock right here, right and there's a loading right dock here. Where's the other one? Right there. There's one up there. there's another one right here. And then there's a loading dock. So okay. on each side they're going. Alright, okay. So plus there's capability. For so so yeah, and that's the original building, so I think you're evil. Are they going to need those? These people we have right now in there, do they need these loading dock for anything? Um, I think AB technology, technology is using yeah. one of them. Yeah, and unless uh, Ontario gasket. But the offices, no. No, but they, if they, they were some talk of possibly uh, maybe doing some manufacturing at a later date, they may, but that's. Yeah. Well, if they grow and they need more right. space, they now, where are they originally space. from? If I may ask, I'm not sure. A terrier gasket? Yeah, I don't know too much about them. John, yeah, John. John, John, John. This AB Technology, whatever, where are they from? Um, AB Technologies, uh, established firm out of uh, Canada. Uh, AB is an abbreviation for. I don't recall. So I believe the principal's one of the, one of the principal's names. So we plan on making how much off this thing? 108 square feet. The space, the first industrial building, the rate of $12. We're well, coming all the way back to B7. Um, this would be $12 a square foot, 108 square feet. Mm -hmm. So we, we plan on uh, how much is that going to pay us? You know what, offhand? $1,296. dollars a month. How much? $108 a month. $108 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. $108 a month? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got you're talking about something that's an office that's... I understand. Small. Smaller than my closet. Oh, is it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, and it's a different animal than what we talked about. I think, I think, you know, just looking at it from my view as a facility chairman, I mean, I didn't view all this, but I think we better take a look at what we really want to do in small pieces and where we want to locate that. I mean, we got to bite the bubble here. These guys are coming in and they're hand picking everything in our, our park. I mean, I understand it's money, but I don't know if it's really money. I don't know. We're even breaking even on this, on this thing. I mean, I don't know what it's cost us. He, he just, magic word was 72 degrees or 50 degrees. What do we want to do here? And then when you companies come in here and they look at something, they say, well, this is it. And they say, what's this guy? And they got a closet here, an office here, we got this, we got that. And they're looking at that. That doesn't make them very probable to say, I want to buy into this. You know, we're, you know. And then we got to move these people now. And what, they got a lease sure, agreement. You know, come along, yes. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we need to have a building just like this where you guys can rent out these little spots. But we don't need to spread them completely in our industrial park. I just... Well, I think that's by the way he came up with this mm -hmm. design of, to be used as a business incubator. Well, we learned from history because in our history we didn't look at it from this perspective and we wound up with a nightmare in a couple of our buildings because everything was all chopped up. And, and in this case we ended up with a big empty building. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you, you know, when we talk about catering service, a company wanting to come in and put in the catering service, you know? I mean, I understand all of that and how that works, but I'm just wondering, there's some vision here that what I'm looking at, it's, it's out here, that people who's already in this area invested. I'm, I'm just looking at it, you know? But maybe you've got somebody that wants to come in and put a catering business in here. That's a food business. Again, just to kind of round out that point, I've had conversations with two individuals that are looking at the space. Um, nothing concrete at this at this time. Well, you're in the infinite stages of what you think may happen. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with you doing. Know. It's just a matter of there's other ways to maybe look at it. Well, it comes down to as a board, is this an area that we want to head? Is question number one. And question number two is, okay, if it is a what direction we want to head, what are our pricing incentives and what type of uh, uh, what type of business incentives do we want to try and offer folks um, to locate in these uh, facilities? Because again, um, I'll give an example, a hypothetical example. Six months free on a um, 10,000 square foot lease for five year term that creates X number of jobs makes sense. That same proposal doesn't make sense if you're talking about 500 square feet. Um, but again, recognizing that these are businesses that hopefully will site here and expand within the footprint of this building, uh, just as AB Thermal or AB Technology is doing, um, there's value to that for us. And we need to approach it and say, okay, yes, this is what we want. No, we don't, or come up with something else, and that's yeah. that's kind of where we are. Well, I, I know we got all the space, and it's like I don't say we're 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 begging for people to get them or give them wholesale deals, and it's nice that they want to come here. And now, in regards to that, you say, all right, what is our long-range plan with the space you got? I mean, if a guy has a catering service, and you had all this office space all cut up, whatever you want to do, and you have I don't know maybe 50, 60, 80 people, 100 people in that building. Catering service makes sense. The guy says, okay, people got to eat, whatever. It's productivity. They go down and eat, do they're back to work, and away you go. I mean, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good model. But uh, you look at your other buildings, and you say, well, where's the other empty space over there? I mean, well, all these three things you got goes back to what I originally said when I looked at this. I'm saying, wow, we got space all over the place here. We got space all over the place, you know? You know, so I, I know you have to do something with building one. I know you got to do something, but I, I guess uh, are these people already in there? These people already moved in? Um, well, you've improved, improved everything up through Ontario Gasket over on page 25. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm saying is, are they there yet? 
Yes, AB Thermal is in the red uh, footprint. They're in there already. Yes. And the and gasket and company is not. The gasket company is not. That's correct. Okay. So when did we approve that other? That must have been approved what, six, seven months ago? AB Thermal probably two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. um, AB Thermal's expansion uh, space you, you just approved tonight. Um, ABS uh, was a while ago. Senko was probably two or three months ago. Morning was t was tonight. Mm -hmm. Let me ask a question. No, I'm going to wait because it's a, it's a question I shouldn't ask right now. Uh, I'll ask it later in the second session because it's to do with a contract, and I got to name name the name the person, and I don't know where that's. At. I think it's got lost in the shuffle. No, it's up there. I don't know who you're talking. About. Well, anyways. I don't have any other questions, Mr. Chairman. It looks like we've got a big building and a lot of people going in and going to have a cafeteria. Catering service. I hope we're not in trouble with Louie on that one. Where are we at? Uh, we're over on page 25. 25. But in this case, we still uh, we still need to move this resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have moved. So no, we you, you asked a question. Okay, well, I asked I'll a make the motion. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought we heard it. Well, it doesn't matter how many seconds. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to go back. Well, let's go back and fill the discussion. Are, are they going to stay there? Is that what our are going to stay there in the 108 square foot? Well, the 108 square feet, uh, the term will be November 1st, 2012 through October 31st, 2013. So we're going to put them in there here. Maybe, maybe a year from now they, they can't do anything with it and okay. they move out, or maybe they expand. Yeah. Well, that's, I guess that's what you, the risk of the factor is here. Yeah. Okay. We have a second to you, right, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. Or Mona, I'm sorry. Yeah. Could be. Okay, no further questions. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 What else we have there? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is a need for, uh, for a brief executive session uh, regarding uh, potential uh, items of acquisition, uh, items of. Uh, uh, make a motion for executive session for the following reasons that the uh, executive director is uh, noted. So noted. Anything coming out of the executive session that will be notified. Have a second on that one? Steve? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Don't wait for a